First of all, before this video starts, I would like to give a big thank you to all of my new subscribers. I was not expecting even one subscriber, to be honest. So to wake up this morning and see a hundred people following me, I was a bit surprised. So thank you so much for liking my content and I hope you stick around in the future for even more content. About two days ago, I gave my final presentation on my senior project, which fingers crossed went really well, meaning that in a couple of weeks now, I will finally graduate college. I mean, it just feels so great to finally be free of homework assignments, projects, and free from the goddamn elevator that breaks every two weeks. Finally, I'm able to do whatever I want as a free adult. Who are you? Yeah, hi. Uh, did you check your bank account? What do you, what do you mean, check? Just, just check your bank account. Oh. Yeah. 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 I should probably get a job. It's kind of funny how college just kind of takes your money and then after four years throws you out to the streets and says, good luck on finding a job. And you know, please, when you get money, pay us even more. It's like the first couple thousand dollars were not enough for them. But I do want to agree that college does not have to baby you through all of the steps of life. Finding a career is something that you have to do all on your own. But anyway, because I'm soon going to need to find a job, I wanted to spend some time and research a little bit about the possible jobs there are out there. Because one of the beautiful things about being a programmer is that you're not really limited to just working in one field, which is amazing because imagine if you're majoring in art history, I'm so sorry, but hear me out, put down your paint brushes, or no, or I don't think art historians paint, put down your art textbooks. What I mean by this is that as an art historian, I think the only place you really work in is a museum or something. As a programmer, however, you have many different fields to choose from. You could work as a programmer in the medical field. You could work as a programmer in the finance field. You can work in robotics, in avionics. Heck, you could even work at Roblox. You're laughing, but I kid you not, that's where the real money is. Look it up, I swear. And so today I'm gonna spend a little bit of time going through various different fields and figuring out what they are and what it takes to become whatever it is you're gonna become. <laughs> Disclaimer, I spent a little bit of time researching this so that I don't sound like an idiot, but if I do get something wrong, please let me know in the comments. After a little bit of researching, I've compiled a bit of information about some of the most popular jobs there are. And the most basic jobs that usually pop up are computer programmers and software engineers. Now you might be thinking, Aren't those the same thing? I mean, they surely sound like the same thing. I mean, a software engineer just kind of sounds like a fancier version of a computer programmer. Oh, what do you do for a job? Oh, I write computer programs. Oh, cool, cool. What do you do for a job? I engineer software. Oh, okay. But there is a difference though. So let me first explain what a computer programmer is. A computer programmer at the most basic level is someone who can write, modify, and test code. Although we all know that you're probably gonna spend like 10% of the time writing code, the other 90% of the time banging your head against a wall because something isn't working. Don't you just love being a programmer? You should generally be proficient in at least one type of language and have a basic knowledge of computer science principles. We help us to see what's trending at the time in the programming world to see what language you should learn. And now we have the software engineer. To put it simply, they're not only responsible for writing the code, they're responsible for coming up with the concept of the code. You can think of this as a mechanic is able to put a car together with a bunch of parts, but a mechanical engineer can understand the individual functionality of each part as well as probably design the car from scratch himself. These two fields work together in a way where the software engineer spends time developing a specific software and then works together with a bunch of computer programmers to make the completed version of the software. And now the most important part, salary. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Computer programmers earn an average of 93K a year, which is pretty good if I say so myself, while a software engineer averages at 120K a year. But do not confuse this with the starting salary. On average for a starting salary, I'm seeing online a mix between 60K a year or 70K a year at a starting salary. If you're lucky, you could get something higher than that. 
and if you get something lower than that. Anyway, let's move away from these really broad career topics, and I want to talk a little bit about these three jobs that I keep seeing pop up, which let's start with front-end development. Front-end development works at the front end of applications, which is where the UI exists. You're dealing with the buttons, you're dealing with the images, you're dealing with the layout and the design of the website itself. Now, this might not seem like something really difficult, but in fact, it actually is pretty hard to create a really good user interface. What is going on here? Oh. <laughs> what am I looking at? And so if you're gonna be working with UI, it's definitely gonna require a bit of more creative psychology. And that's essentially all that front-end development is. You're gonna need to know a little bit of HTML or CSS. Now, moving on to, I wouldn't call it the opposite of it, but at the opposite end of front-end, you have the back-end. The back-end deals with the functionality of the front-end. So you have the buttons, you have the very coolly animated portfolio website, but do the buttons work? Do you need a database that you need to search? All of this is the responsibility of the back-end developer. Have the love child, the full stack developer. They are the jack of all trades. Now let's talk about salaries. This is where I got a bit confused looking up online because they're giving a bunch of different variety of salaries, like, and I'm just gonna say that I think they're all within the range of 100K. Again, not the starting salary, but the possible future salary. Going even deeper down the rabbit hole, there are even more specific specializations. Cybersecurity is a field where you're working with encryption and making sure that data in websites or applications does not get leaked to hackers. There's also cloud computing. This is a field where you're essentially working on delivering different types of computer resources to different people over the internet. Another important field is data scientists, which are people who work on a load of data that is given to them and try to make sense of it. The reason I'm able to look up all of the salaries is because some data scientist did their job. And there's just so many more specialized jobs out there that if I try to put them all in one video, I would be sitting here for an hour and that's just gonna be too long to edit. So I'm not gonna go any further. I'm gonna link some pages of where I found all this information if you wanna take a look at some more fields that there are. But for now, I'm gonna move on to two fields that I find incredibly interesting myself. The first is game development. Now this career in itself has many different paths. You could think of it as all of the different specializations that I said before, where in game development, you could either work as a, a game programmer, a game designer, and most importantly, I would say you could work as an indie game developer. You don't have to work sitting there nine to five, killing your eyes, killing your back, killing your social life. Instead, you could work from home and develop games on your own or maybe in small teams. Technology is getting so advanced in game development that this is fully possible. And I think it's a lot more comfortable. And lastly, one of the most in-demand fields there are right now is AI and machine learning development. Now, I know you've probably seen it everywhere, how AI is on the rise. And yeah, AI is getting incredibly powerful. Just in the last couple of months, there's been so much progress and development in machine learning and AI that honestly, it really scared me for a bit. But then I sat back and realized this isn't the Terminator. I'll be back. And that's the thing, I don't think many people realize that AI is not this supercomputer that can think on its own. Well, it actually is kind of that. But it's still just a bunch of code. We're not at the level yet where AI can effectively think on its own without having some human sitting there telling it what it's doing wrong or right. Now, this is a field that is on the rise, but the most popular language at the moment to do AI development and machine learning in is Python, but you can use a variety of different languages as well. And I would say for this, you definitely need a bit of math. You also have to understand some more in-depth computer science concepts to understand how to program a neural network, but Nothing Code Academy and a couple of YouTube videos cannot teach you. I will be making another video going more into depth about AI, so subscribe if you are interested in that. And yeah, that's pretty much some of the main jobs that I've looked into. I do wanna close this video off by saying one last thing, and I think this is the most important life lesson that I have been told. See, when it comes to finding a job, people get this misconception that they have to look for their dream job or the job that they're gonna absolutely love to be in every single day of the week. And that's just a bit of naive thinking. I'm not saying that it's impossible to find your dream jobs. There's multiple examples online out there where people find their dream jobs. But some people just don't really know right away what their dream job is, or some people just want to 
dabble in a bunch of fields. And so I feel like instead of saying that you should find your dream job, you should rather find a job that you tolerate at the very least. You see, even in a dream job, you're gonna have bad days. You're gonna have days where you wish you can just jump out the window. And that's fine because a job is a job. There's the saying, you work to live, not live to work. I'm going to try and do a bunch of different projects, you know, and post them on this channel to basically just get a feel for what I personally am interested in. And I highly encourage you do the same thing. Anyway, thank you for watching. Once again, thank you so much to all of my new subscribers. And yeah, see you next time. Thank you.